Hello, I'm so glad you joined me tonight. We are talking about the month of Tammuz tonight. Why? Because we've just entered into this brand new Hebrew month. It's a very, very special month. It is a month of repentance. It's a month where we have come from Sivan. We have come from being positioned as a royal nation, a holy priesthood. God has given us a divine setup. He has brought forth his Ten Commandments. And then we have agreed to follow after those commandments and follow after having right hearts that hear the voice of the Lord and respond to it hearts that are sure of our inheritance as the children of the king and so the month of Tammuz is the fourth month on the religious calendar the tenth month on the civil calendar and it is recognized as a month named after a Babylonian God now why would the Jewish people do this they're doing this because they want to remember that this was the month that Moses came down the mountain with the Ten Commandments and what did he do but find the people worshiping a golden calf all right so so this golden calf was put together by the gold and silver that God had made them favorably disposed to the Egyptians at the exodus and said go and get the spoils of the wealth and bring it with you and and so god had blessed them with this gold and silver before they were leaving egypt so here they find themselves in a a situation where moses been up on the mountain now uh for probably you know about 30 days a little less than 30 days okay and he's been up there and he's getting these 10 commandments and he's bringing them down all right. Now, remember when the Lord called them to Mount Sinai, he set them apart. He consecrated them, anointed them, called them a holy nation and a royal priesthood. He gave them their identity. And he said in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, he said to them, listen, you shall have no other gods before me. I am the God who brought you out of Egypt. OK, so he says this specifically, he says, do not bow down and worship any other gods. All right. This is part of the Ten Commandments. And so. But the Moses is up here on the mountain. He's been up there for uh, quite a while now. They start taking this gold and silver that was given them. Okay, the blessing that was given them by God. And they're setting up now a molten golden calf to worship. And they're giving this calf a level of um, authority as though it was what brought them out of Egypt. I got to read this to you. This is crazy. Exodus chapter 32, verses 7 and 8. The word says that Lord, the Lord himself said to Moses, "Get, go get thee down. In other words, get down from the mountain. Because that people which you brought us out of the land of Egypt, they've corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. And they have made a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed to this calf. And they've said, these are the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So these people gave credit to the gold and silver for getting them out of Egypt. Well, what a lie is that? I mean, it was truly the Lord in Exodus chapter six. It says he plucks them out. All right. Yes. He gives them the gold and the silver to take with them. He reveals to them in the month of ER what's in their hearts. Cause remember they were traumatized after more than 400 years, right? Um, of being in bondage. And so they needed to know that they could trust God. So he does all of this for them. And then they find themselves at the base of the mountain because Moses has been up there for quite some time. They don't have any leadership. And because they don't really believe in God like they say they do, they don't think he's watching them. So they go and they get restless for order. They get restless for a word. And while they're restless for a word, they start worshiping this golden calf. Now the golden calf was made from the wealth that they took, okay, the wealth of the wicked that came forth, they began to start worshiping, okay? So from this wicked wealth, all right, that God ends up giving them as a blessing for them, they start worshiping. And during this time, the Lord is saying, hey, hello, it's time to repent. It's time to come back to me. See, I didn't give you that wealth for you to worship it and call it and give it credit. 
that, that it brought you out of Egypt, but I am the one that brought you out of Egypt. And by the way, God always gives us a warning before something is about ready to happen. So he told them, okay, to worship him and to worship him only and not, not to serve any other gods. Yet here we find them doing that. So Moses comes down, he gets angry, breaks the tablets. Um, there ends up being um, some death that takes place as a discipline as a result but what do we learn? What do you and I learn here in this month of Tammuz? Well, we've got to go back to what Sivan was about. Sivan is about setting apart royal nation, holy priesthood, stand on the covenant. I've been speaking to you about the scrolls of heaven and that they've been releasing uh, the, the words of heaven over you. And you have to stand on that. You're just stand on every word. Okay. So this is the time now, as we come into Tammuz, where it's very important that you stand on the covenant, the covenant commitments that you've made with the Lord, not only his commandments, his 10 commandments, the, the, all of his commandments, but the things he said about you and about your purpose and destiny and that you hang on to that as a foundation because now he's taking you on a journey here for the next 30 days as we've entered to moves. He's taking you on a journey where he's going to begin to reveal to you the things in your heart that you worship more than him. See, he wants you to have a temple that's clean and holy and righteous where you're not serving anything and you're especially not serving other gods by working really hard to gain wealth for yourself, to gain gold and silver, to gain provision, to go through that process of, of um, always thinking about how are you going to get provision, protection, and acceptance? How are you going to be... Um, in uh, relationships and have security and power and the things that you might need. The cunning and the craftiness of humanity in order to gain something. So this is a month that God strips us of that. But before God strips us, he's really good. He always makes us remember our strong foundation that we have in his covenant. And this is what he's saying. He's saying, remember what was written about you and remember what I spoke to you. Because when you do, when you do remember that, you will keep your eyes off of the distraction that the enemy is going to put in your way by making you say that the power of your own hands has established the covenant. It's created wealth for you to establish the covenant. No, no, no. The word tells us in Deuteronomy 8.18 that, that it is God who gives us the power to create wealth to establish his covenant. And what does that mean? It means he gives us the power to have the faith that creates something that will establish the covenant words that have been spoken over our life. Now hear me clearly, the power to create wealth, that word wealth is a substance word. It means you have the tangibility to hang on to something. It's not just the wealth of gold and silver. That is part of it, but it is part of the faith required. It is the power of God-like faith that becomes a substance that releases into your life what establishes the covenant between you and God, okay? So you got to change their thinking here. It's not that God gives you all of this wealth. He gives you the power to create the wealth by faith. He gives you ideas. He gives you a revelation from heaven. He gives you the tangibility of knowing that something is getting ready to come to pass that will establish who you say you are. So the Lord wants us to stand on that. And he wanted the Jewish people to stand on that too. He wanted them to stand on who he said they were, a holy nation and a royal priesthood, children of the inheritance, that he would provide all things for them. And he did. He was faithful. He gave them the gold and silver from Egypt, amongst other things. He rained down manna from heaven, quail in their front yard. They got water from a rock, every provision that they needed. Why? Because that's who God is. He does the same thing for us today. But humanity and the cunning and the craftiness of Satan wants us to say it is us. So our thoughts begin to start prodding around. How can I gain? What can I get? Um, who can I be? Where can I go? What can I do? It's this consistent restlessness. And I told you, this is the time to enter covenant rest because it is there that you will find your covenant blessings. Well, in Tammuz, we find the discipline that comes as a result of them not standing on their covenant covenant blessings. They're covenant children. And what did they do? They took the blessing and started worshiping it. So warning, warning, warning. We are going to be tested this month about what are the cunning and the crafty things that the enemy is doing in and around us to get us to worship the enemy and bow down to him and say, 
the power of our own hands has created this wealth for us. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. See, the Lord wants you to know all the things that will take you out later. Why? Because in the month of Av, we're then also entering into a time of mourning and fasting. There's three weeks called Between the Straits that happens where the temple was destroyed. Then there's a rebuilding in the month of Elul where the temple was built back up. And then we know there's double portion that happens at Rosh Hashanah. So this is part of that progression. In the wilderness, there was a progression from God pulling them out and giving them all of that wealth and and feeding them with manna and doing all that to now being set up to, do you believe in who you are? Let's see if you do. See, Satan's always on the prowl. He's, He's prowling around like a lion seeking to whom he can devour. God wants you to stand this month on the, on the blesser. Who is the one that blessed you? Not the blessing that you got. See, your eyes are always going to go to the blessing that you received. Be thankful for the blessing that you received by worshiping the blesser. Now, the Satan doesn't like that. He wants you to do everything in your mind, your will, and your emotions to worship him. He's going to create all kinds of distraction around you. He's going to cause you to see things that you never even saw before, and you're going to be drawn to them. Now, a worship of something that becomes a small gold or silver molten calf in our life is something that we think about more than God. If you're thinking about something more than God and more than your relationship with him, then there's something that's broken. There's something that's missing. There's something that's not whole. That's what you need to repent of this month. As we're entering into Tammuz, go to those places. God is releasing new mantle assignments this month, okay? So he's going to also bring you additional assignments for how he's going to build this temple and take you to double portion. He's going to build it off the established covenant that he started to reveal to you in the month of Sivan. But you can't take this stuff with you into the new in in, uh, Rosh Hashanah in September. You got to be stripped of it. So we go through the stripping process. We got to find what are these enemies that lurk around us that take our time our talent our treasure our testimony that cause us to step out in spirits of fear and anxiety that are ruling certain aspects of our of our mind our will and our emotions the lord wants those gone he wants to strip you of them and so this begins a stripping phase for the next six to eight weeks you're going to be going through a process there's still going to be blessing. There's still going to be warfare. There's still going to be these revelations that come to you. Keep yourself open and say, God, what is it that I need to get rid of as you rebuild my temple in August, as you get me straight in the month of Elul before I come into my double portion time? I want to be ready for that, God. So I want us to take just a couple minutes. I'm going to pray with you, okay? Because it, now God is saying, return to me. I have blessings I want to give you, but I don't want one ounce of your thinking to go to those blessings, only to come to me, me who is the one that blesses you. So I'm going to pray for you right now. And listen, every word I share with you is also a word for myself. This is the month of Tammuz for me too. God's going to be taking me through a stripping phase. He's going to be revealing to me the things that cannot go with me into the fall. He's going to be teaching us more about his covenant rest, about the fact that we have all of these things. So we don't to listen to the cunningness and the craftiness of our enemy which says go make more go do more go be more go blah blah yes more but more from the aspect of our current foundation of knowing that god is our provider not more as in do it in fear because you don't know where you're going to get it from or when it's going to happen see see hear me clearly one is god says go ahead and seek after more of me and i will bring you more versus is um, the enemy says, you don't have enough, so go get more, okay? And and the way the enemy works in our mind is he always works on us in the area of lack. He tries to tell you, you don't have enough of something. That's how he talks. You don't have enough. You're not going to get enough. God's not going to provide enough. This is how he talks, okay? So get his his uh, voice clear for you, the enemy's voice, okay? Because for him, it's never going to be enough. Why? Because because between him and God, when the enemy tells you there's not enough and then you go walking on a journey to find more because you don't believe God, the enemy goes, uh-huh, see, they're worshiping me. This is why God says don't bow down any of their gods. But when you say, no, I have more than enough, and I'm talking to you, any of you are watching me all over the world, and some have more than others, okay? But it doesn't matter here. Listen to me. Whatever your current situation is, economically or whatever, 
you say, God has given me enough and you rest in that. And then you watch him bring forth what else is needed. The Israelites had to rely on him then for everything. All the way across the desert, they had nothing. They didn't know when their shoes were going to wear out, their clothes. None of it wore out. This is supernatural stuff. We are called as a people of God to live supernaturally. The enemy hates that. He wants you to live in the, in the realm of the earth only. Only do what the earth is saying and how the earth is saying it. The enemy wants to do everything he can to convince you to live like that. But the Lord is saying, I need you to live by faith. The power of my wealth creation revolves around the substance of faith. So I'm going to pray for you right now, not only for repentance, for when God brings you these idols in your life that are drawing your energy, they're drawing you away from God, they're drawing you to other things, but also pray for you that your faith would be increased, all right? Because just as uh, Jesus prayed for Peter that his faith would not fail him when he became tested by the enemy in this month of Tammuz, I pray for all of us that our faith will not fail us, but it will indeed go to next levels of wealth creation. That is the power of faith that becomes so much of a substance that we can step out in faith and do what it is that God is telling us to do and release from heaven the vat, the gold, the silver, the wine, the oil, whatever is needed. So Father, I thank you for my friend today. We're entering into Tammuz, Father. It's a month where we remember that we seek after idols. We're humans that seek after them. We're stiff-necked people, Lord. We ask for your forgiveness right now, Lord. And I ask you, Father, to reveal to each and every one of us, Father, what are the things that are preventing us from going to next levels of maturity in you, next levels of knowing who you are, next levels of resting in you, next levels of understanding you as the great blesser and giver and great king. Reveal that to us, Father, so that we do not have our temple rebuilt with any of these things on the inside, Father. There is nothing that can ruin a temple more than if you set up a gold and silver idol on the inside of it. So, Lord, strip us right now in the mighty name of Yeshua and take us to a place where we return to you in purity and authenticity. We ask for your forgiveness, Father, because we are sinners. We do sin, Lord Jesus. We do seek after other things. We don't want to. Lord, we want to be faithful to you. And so, Father, help us to be faithful unto you and reveal this month of Tammuz what needs to be revealed. We want to be raised up. We want to walk in our identity as a royal nation and a holy priesthood, Father, and carry forth in the commandments that you've given us. We want that, Father. And so we stand before you today and we humble ourselves, Lord Jesus. We humble ourselves. We ask for your forgiveness. And we thank you that you're going to reveal to us. And I'm prophesying right now every area that the enemy has come against you to kill, steal, and destroy. The Lord says that he came to give life and to give it to you more abundantly. And as the enemy comes to, to begin to do these things, if he's not already, and, and there's lots of spiritual warfare around you, God says he's going to protect you. Humble yourself. Get on your face before him, and God will cut it off. Every spirit of fear, anxiety, and depression be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. And rise up with some strong, disciplined thinking and hang on to the covenant, commitment, and commandments that God has said in his word. Worship no other God and watch your foundation begin to rise. Watch your temple begin to put up the right blocks so that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. God is stripping right now. And so, Father, I praise you and I thank you right now, Lord. I thank you. You're, as you're stripping our idols, you're stripping away those demonic forces that have a stronghold on each and every idol right now. In Yeshua's name, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and we thank you. And Lord, I thank you that you're lifting us up. Teach us about covenant. Teach us about the power of wealth creation. Whoo, hallelujah. I see your faith increasing right now. See, faith is a tangible thing. Ask the Lord to help you hold on to a place of faith where you know that he is going to be that provider. Wash your mind with the word of God. Sow to the spirit and reap from the spirit. Begin to enter these places and see the strongholds of the enemy come off with the strength of your temple in the most holy God. Raise up. Father, I praise you and I thank you right now. Increase our faith. Just increase it right now in the mighty name of Yeshua. I thank you, Father, that the power of our own hands did not create this wealth for us to establish the covenant on our life, the covenant of blessing. But you, Father, you are the one that gives us the faith that we need to carry out what needs 
needs to be carried out to supernaturally, Father, you will establish the covenant before us. Whoo, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited right now. Somebody share this with a friend because we've entered into Tammuz and you know what? We need each other in Tammuz and Av because they're they're rough months. They're the dog days of summer. I'm just saying we're, we're up on it now, folks. And so these are some of the things that happen in the summer months. It's a time of rest that God is working on you. The latter glory in your house, in your temple, is going to be way greater than the former of last year. And so God is doing a mighty thing. So just praise him. Every time that enemy comes against you, just praise him. Woo, hallelujah. For those of you who are watching today, if you want to know more about this month of Tammuz and more about how to walk through the process of allowing God to strip you of these idols and be healed and whole, I want you to join me for my live Zoom call the next one is Wednesday, July 5th at 10 a.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Eastern. There's small costs associated. These are great calls. People receive healing. They get prophecy from other members of the group. It is very interactive. I have leaders all over the world that are on the line. It's a great opportunity for me to know you and you to know me. So sign up today. Go to CandiceSmithman.com and sign up for Maximize Your Prophetic Potential. That's where you're going to grab a hold of those live, live Zoom classes. Also, as you're entering in to this new year, it's going to be coming. The new civil year will be coming September, October. I want you to get strengthened in understanding these levels of faith to create wealth. My book, Heavenly Portals, is one that you need on your shelf. I am telling you, people all over the world are reading this book. They are learning how to ascend and stay seated with Christ in heavenly places. They are learning how to have the mind shifts that are necessary to release this power of faith that changes the things that happen in the earth today. I just want to encourage you to grab a hold of the Heavenly Portals, the book, and the Masterclass. You can get it right on MP3. It'll be automatically downloaded wherever you're at in the world. You can get it that way. You can also get it uh, the book on Kindle anywhere in the world. It will come automatically that way. But if you're in the U.S., reach out to me. It's a blessing to the ministry when you purchase the book through us or purchase the CDs or MP3 files. And, and we want to get those out to you right away. Great way to spend the dog days of summer. Get in this book and watch things shift for you. You are going to learn the power of the ascension. And that is a very, very special place of being in mental rest with the God. I hear, I know some of you are just in such agony in your minds. This is going to bring you mental rest. It's going to shift your faith to next levels. I have people write me all over the world, churches that write me that do this book. And they say, oh my gosh, our whole church has shifted. We are ascending in this place. We are receiving so much from God. There is such an impartation that is coming forth from the book and from the mp3 files from the cd so listen i do not want you to be without this teaching there's an impartation on it for sure so get a copy of heavenly portals it teaches you all about how eternity or the eternal time zone affects the earth time zones we live there's two different time zones we walk in the earth time zone but we exist in the eternal time zone come on you got to know about this stuff you do not know about this stuff but god has given us wisdom in his word and i want to share it with you today so make sure you share this with a friend We've entered to moose. It's a time to let God strip us to strengthen us. All right, be blessed and share this with a friend, and I'll see you next week.